Welcome back to my channel. I have almost finished putting back together the 300 DLX. If I hadn't mentioned it before, I believe it was 2010. Got to looking at some receipts, and that's when I had worked on this last. And it's lasted a long time because I ran it every day at work for at least an hour or two and then on weekends it was always being used and then sometimes at work it would run all day 10 hours and I know that it's got over 8,000 hours just on that bearing so turn around here give you a view if you can see it because of the lighting I've gotten the armature this piece here back in place I showed you some of that I'm, I'm not sure what these are they're capacitors it looks like and then on the other side over here that right that piece right there that's a I believe it's a transformer it's back on there all the wirings put back on I got to put the fuel tank back on I'm getting ready to do that and then on the back over here right here is where the radiator goes and the fan uh, pushes the air out through the radiator Something I did forget to mention The brushes there's two wires There's two wires right there that go to the brushes and there's a bracket in there that that holds the uh, brushes and clear up uh, up inside here where the I can't see my hands in the way Clear up inside there if you look where the mail is it'll see where the wire goes it'll have uh, the word red so that's where your red wire goes and then your white wire goes on the other side in case you forget it is labeled on the bracket it's hard to see it I think it's on the bottom side just let you know in case you have one of these and you work on it all put together fuel tanks been put together it was cleaned out real good I did it about three times had to rinse it out real good and swish it around got it bolted in got all the fuel lines hooked up need to put some radiator fluid in it right now um, I'm gonna check the wiring diagrams final making sure I've got everything uh, especially over on the starter side to the alternator something's confusing me but uh, check the oil and uh, the batteries on the charger right now it's been sitting for two months I've been working on this bailing hay and fixing machinery and working on this so I'm going to finish filling this up Not sure how easily you're going to be able to see this. <clears throat> but right where the hose is and the water neck, it's not leaking. But right there, where the tank and the neck go together, it's a leak right in that corner. And it just dripped. So what I got to do now, I'm going to have to take the water out, take the uh, radiator housing off, and clean that neck and solder it. Evidently over the past in the years, 
it's got a weak spot right there. When I removed the radiator hose, it probably jarred it a little bit and loosened that up, and that's why it's leaking now. After I took it out of the welding machine, I laid it flat. Of course, there's no water in it. And I cleaned it with a wire brush, a stainless steel hand brush, and a wire wheel stainless steel brush that you can use. I did use it on an electric um, battery operated drill. And then used some resin, got it real nice and hot so that it cleans that whole area there of the, of the fillet that it needs to fill. And I use 60% um, tin and 40% lead and I put a, a bead on it until it was 3 sixteenths of an inch all the way around onto that water neck. All the fluids have been put in. There's no leak in the radiator anymore as of now. Prime and ejected right now. Pump going to the ejector. Right. And it's shut itself off. There's nothing but lack of fuel, is what it is. There's a dead spot somewhere where the fuel is not sucking to the injector. So, it probably wouldn't hurt to, there's a manual, there's a manual pump on the lift pump. I mean, it doesn't hurt to, there's fuel in the fuel filter. We know it runs though. I know it runs. <laughs> ah. I guess I'm including everyone else. So what happens when you do this, it goes to the injectors and whatever's closed is closed and it goes to the bypass back into the tank. So you just keep filling that up is what I'm doing. But somewhere there was a, a, a void in the line of, of diesel. It's sensing something. Either I got a wire that I don't have hooked up right to like the oil pressure. Something somewhere on a sensor. So I'm going to have to go through this again and look at it some more and I'll be back with you. Alright. Uh, I decided to change this alternator also this one here it's not original supposedly it came off of uh, a car maybe but I don't know if you can hear it or not little there's some play in that shaft and it was making a little bit of noise still producing juice but I got it tore apart I have had another one, well, that was the original one. I had it rebuilt a few years back. So we'll start it up again, see how it sounds.
tester will say 14.39. If you can't see it, there's a glare once in a while. And also, while I'm here, I've noticed there's fuel right here. There's a crack right here in the fuel return. So I'm going to have to cut it and find some more and sp splice it or get a new line. We'll tear this out, though, first. And then fix that return line. What I want to work on first is the high idle and low idle solenoid first before I work on that fuel line I've got to put a new one on it. It stalls when it wants to idle up. What I mean by stall is it hesitates uh, to engage wires, got to one side. high idle. The white one with the red wire in it is definitely the one that goes on top. So now I've got a yeah, snap ring right there. Right there. Oop, can't get to it. Right there. I'm going to pull that snap ring out, and then this arm will come out. And then when I unbolt everything, I can take the whole unit off. It just presses in there a little bit hard. Uh, if you've seen that or not. <clears throat> What I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap that, the hammer, and it comes out. And when you put it back together, you're going to have to press it back in a little bit. Probably that snap ring's wallered that enough to where it's hard to come out. In case I have not mentioned, disconnect the battery before you start doing anything electrically, whether it's the alternator or whether it is this solenoid. Always disconnect the battery before you do any electrical work. Okay, pop that out. Now the shaft's going to come out with the solenoid. It's not in the greatest shape. And it pops right out. Once you get that off there, it's all just leave it all connected because it was adjusted. Might spray that with some lube, <clears throat> but it's just down in there like that. And we, and there's two different wires here. One, and they're the good thing we are put some stuff on it. Probably should get to it now while you can see it. The bottom one in. <sighs> it's going to be difficult. The rings in the way. Okay, I'm locked in good too. Alright, now we'll put this pin in where it was. And being it was tight getting it out, we'll have to kind of pull, press pull it back in and finish uh, tightening up these bolts. And then I want to fix this. I got a new line, I'll get it fixed. After fixing that fuel line, that return fuel line, the engine ran way smoother. Never had a problem after that. It's been running for some time now, and right now at this moment, I am cleaning the armature. This is the exciter armature. This is where the brushes touch, right here in this brass area. 12 volts, and it goes through the generator and creates the electricity for welding and the other electrical things needed. I'm using 400 grit sandpaper and I'm touching it very lightly, just taking the glaze off of that brass area to help it get better contact. Finally, got it all running again as you can see. Now I want to test everything, make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. Besides just 
striking an arc, I want to know where the numbers are. <clears throat> and there's a thing called open circuit voltage. These machines put out a maximum voltage when you're at maximum amperage and your rheostat is on max. Now you don't have to go to max, you can go in the top three is good. Um, I'm going to go at 225. And the rheostat is on max. And it's going to, here the rating on the panel says 80 volts at 3700 RPMs. And I know it's lower than that. Probably my RPMs are a little bit lower than that too. That's where the factory set it. So what I'm going to do right now, I want to show you on the meter what it looks like. Now this has to be set on voltage and I want DC volts. I don't want AC, I want DC. So it's 62.4. It runs pretty good. What that does <clears throat> is saying that the open circuit voltage is giving that much voltage at maximum. Now, when you're welding, it's not going to be that high. Um, says right there 100 percent duty cycle 25 25 volts at 300 dc Set the machine at 100 amps on the gear selector of the course setting and the rheostat setting on the machine is set at 8, so it's around 80 amps. And I'm welding with 78 team, it's doing really good. That's the first bead that it's made since I had a tour party.